Mm. Beautiful. 107, 107 people joined the live stream on Sunday. Thank you, thank you all for you guys who did join. 170 people on the very first YouTube live stream is beautiful. Same again on Sunday. Well, I would say tomorrow, but you guys won't see this till after that live stream has happened. So the live stream will be happening tomorrow for me, but happening for you guys maybe next Sunday again. I want to be doing live streams twice a week on YouTube. One session is live trading and the second is a Sunday market breakdown. So if you guys do want to stay tuned for that, you know, hit all them fantastic buttons, like, subscribe, and we'll be doing all that breaking down the markets for absolutely free for you guys on YouTube and just bringing even more value. But plan of action today is Saturday today. So we're having a chilled day. The markets are closed and it's monthly Q and A time. I'm not going to answer loads of questions this week because there were some very good questions that I just want to focus on just them because they were fantastic questions. And that's what we're going to do today as well as this morning, I have recorded a brand new course video for the community, which is my entire trade management plan. How to keep your losses super small, how to properly grow your account and how to increase your profits by at least double to three fold without increasing your risk. So very, very smart concepts, not smart money concepts. I don't, I just, I've, I've just literally just shot myself in the foot right there. No, I do not trade SMC. Maybe SMC works for you. I don't trade it. So that has just gone live in the community. If you guys are interested in the community, my live trading, etc. course, it's all within the community. There's no upselling because that's what people had thought, but it's all in there for you. And something that I just posted today on my Instagram is if you join the community and you find any course content in there that you've seen before, I will give you a refund because I guarantee you guys, there is things in there that you would have never seen or even heard before. That I guarantee you because I have created them myself and developed these tools and these strategies along with, I show everyone in the community, live payouts from funded prop firms trading exactly this way. A good trading week last week, a good start to November, had an AUD yen trade, which I'll pop up, which ran into 3.5%, um, secured a lot of my partials, and then the rest got stopped at break even, but fantastic trade, fantastic execution. Uh, NASDAQ, small trades here and there, it was very, very quiet. We had NFP this week, so it was pretty expected, so I wasn't looking um, to go all in, all in all, good week, cannot complain. Hope you guys did a fantastic trading week. If you did make bank, let me know. If you didn't make bank, also let me know. I wanna help you. Let me know why you didn't make bank or why you think you didn't make bank. Don't just end your week and be like, ah oh man, this was a dead week. Understand why you lost money, how you could have not lost money, and how you can improve moving forward because that's what we're all here for. So what we're all here for at the end of the day is to drink coffee, make money together, and travel the world. So, mm. so that's the plan of action today for me. I've recorded content for the community. I'm recording content for you guys. I'm gonna go work out and we're gonna do a Q&A. Before I go work out, we're gonna do a Q&A. We're gonna go answer a question. Looking outside, wondering if we go sit on the balcony or not because it's quite cloudy for a change. It's been very, very hot this week, but it's cloudy today. But yeah, let's get right in to the Q&A. So guys, a great question from my man, Ryan. When did you feel you turned the corner into profitable trading? Was there a certain moment? Apologies, I just had to come inside because it's too windy outside, but fantastic question. And I wouldn't say there was an exact day that things started to change me that I can specifically put my finger on and remember, but I did experience one of the most incredible aha moments that I've ever experienced in anything in life before in trading is studying everything for so long and me thinking things are making sense but not fully understanding how to actually put it into practice and understanding where might price go before it does something or why does it have to react from here? Why can it not do this? Why can it not do that? And one thing I never used to understand that well was fibs and once I eventually put it, that all together and I kept studying, one day I just woke up and I had just the most craziest like aha moment ever where just everything just started to make sense and it didn't make sense to me as to why it randomly just started to make sense but it came down to you know studying the markets for so long and being persistent and having and building a good trading plan to then you know, realize that your job as a trader isn't to predict, it's simply to react. And it doesn't matter if price is gonna drop from 
61% fib or a trend line, whatever it may be. That's not the job and to predict something like that. And it took me a while to accept and realize that the issue was coming from myself and thinking too much as opposed to just, you know, executing and having a good plan and, and strong trading psychology. But in terms of profitability, it's, you know, very slow and steady. Um, I think a lot of people with these funding firms see people going from making zero in trading to making 10K a month and thinking that's possible. I personally wouldn't have my journey any other way of trading a small account, seeing very small profits and gradually, gradually, gradually growing that into much bigger profits where it then, you know, became much more consistent from having red days to green days, from red weeks to green weeks to red months and red quarters to green months and green quarters. I don't remember the last time I've had a red month in trading and that's not because I'm the best trader in the world and I can call every single move, but it's because my plan allows me and my strategy is adapted so that I never take full losses um, for many different reasons. People in the community are not exactly what I'm talking about, but finding that consistency, you know, if you're not having, I don't mean you specifically, Rome, because I know you're doing incredibly well, but other people, if you're not finding that consistency and you've ended this week red, go back and understand why was that red? What could you have done different? And every single week, regardless if your PL is going up or not, you have to be making some sort of progression. And you know, if you do take losses, I look at it as that's a cost towards you becoming a better trader. So turning point for me, just time, 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 and putting in hours and hours and hours that people will never even see on social media or will never even understand the amount of hours that truly go into perfecting this craft. I didn't really have, you know, a mentor that I could go and talk to on a personal level or a course that actually made sense to me. I just felt like everything was, nothing was really making sense to me. Nothing was suiting my style and I knew there was a a deeper understanding of the markets as opposed to all the retail stuff you see on Instagram. So I was just exploring that a lot um, and just knowing that if I keep working hard and I'm still persistent and if there's someone out there making money from trading, there is absolutely no reason why I cannot do it and why I will not continue to do it. Second question, which I've had a lot recently is why did you switch from swing trading to day trading? Now, a lot of people here know swing trading on this channel and in my trading journey has always been the foundation and that hasn't changed. Nothing's changed at all. I still swing trade. We took a fantastic swing trade yesterday on AUD yen in the markets, which ran into 3.5%. We held that for about two to three days. Um, and that was a, a short time swing, but a fantastic higher time frame position where I wasn't needing to watch it every single five, 10 hourly candle close. To answer your question, I have not stopped swing trading FX. Swing trading FX will always be my bread and butter. It's what I love, it allows me to have the freedom, but it also allows me to do the day trading, which I'm now exploring and finding incredibly enjoyable. If I'm in a swing position and you know I'm at home, I'm able to watch the charts, I'm able to get involved in the day trading and I, and I want to, I'm gonna do that. But if I don't want to, and I wanna take a day off the charts because I have some swings running, I'm gonna go do that as well. You know, I'm not, I'm not a slave to my charts. And this is the reason I love swing trading is because it allows you to trade, travel, or work. You know, a lot of people, when they get started in trading, they start in day trading for whatever reason, yet you have a job, you have a family, you have a girlfriend, you have commitments, and day trading just probably isn't suited to you. So understand swing trading, understand that that's probably beneficial for me. When I started, I first started actually day trading OTC stocks and that didn't last too long or too well. And then I started day trading Forex and that wasn't working for me either because I was at the time, you know, working a full-time job and I had a girlfriend and I had other commitments and I was working back in the UK. So I was working nine to five and struggling to find the time to when to actually day trading, you know, whilst being in work, going to the toilets and sitting on my phone and trying to draw levels of support and resistance and fibs on my phone and it just blew up and it was never going to work and it was never going to be sustainable and no one really told me about swing trading you know no one really explained to me what is swing trading how does it work and i had kind of had to find my own feet in that sense i've never had a swing trading mentor to this day and i just adapted my own kind of freedom if you want to call it without sounding like an absolute clown my freedom swing trading plan that allows me to you know execute on the hourly and have very good stop losses and be managing off the four hourly and daily time frame. When I did explore swing trading, I would see people, you know, making 700 pips, but having 300 pips stop losses. And that was never my goal. I did not like knowing that I'm probably gonna be sitting in drawdown. So what I then did was I adapted my day trading plan into my swing trading plan to allow me to have max 30 to 50 pips stop losses going for the big two, 300 plus pip 
rewards. So I was catching, you know, the one to tens and just holding them, securing partials of where it made sense, leaving runners and then runners would just allow me to buy my time, buy my freedom, and also allowed me to spend more time studying the charts without worrying every single session. I need to be day trading, so when am I actually gonna be putting in the hours to learn and study? If I'm just focused on day trading all this time, when does studying come into it, you know? Studying forward testing on the charts is fantastic, but you need to also be studying a strategy and adapting that into you. So no, swing trading has gone absolutely nowhere. Swing trading for me, will never go anywhere. I will always have big positions running um, and I will always be looking and sending in big positions in the community. The FX trades that I do share in the community are signals. They're medium to short term swings that will hold for a few days to a week to max. But that for me buys me fantastic freedom and in the meantime, if I want to take some day trades, I will. If I don't, life is good. Sir, can you explain profitable trading in four steps or so? I'm not really too sure what you mean by can I explain profitable trading. Profitable trading is just, I don't know, being consistent over a long period of time. But in order for you to become a profitable trader, you need three plans. You need an entry plan, you need a risk management plan, and I don't just mean 1% risk per trade, and you need a trade management plan. And you probably need a psychological plan as well. So. There you go, there's your four, <laughs> there's your four steps. <laughs> uh, entering plan, stop loss plan, slash risk management plan, <laughs> trade management plan and psychology plan. Boom, four, done, smash, there you go. <laughs> Someone's asked, do you think about trying funded trading plus? I have never heard of them. Um, it's something that I can look into. I have a few in the works that people have asked me to try, I just haven't got around to it yet just because I've been super busy trading uh, personal current for other accounts, but I will give, my next one I'm gonna give a go, which I've heard good things about is True Forex Funds. I believe they're supposed to be good. My friend Ash put me onto them, so I'm gonna be giving them a go in the near future, um, and I'll be keeping you guys posted as to how I get on. But I haven't got around to it yet. I've been busy, all right? I've been very, very busy. I, don't, I had a 100K account banned this week. It's been a stressful week. <laughs> but in next week's video, I'll be sharing with you guys the 100k account I got banned for absolutely no reason um, and share with you guys companies that I've found so far that you should be staying away from. And I'm just going to be giving my personal experience. I'm not going to be slating any companies or saying any companies are crap that or any companies are good. I'm just going to purely share my experience of what I have found and what I found with these so far with this company I'm talking about, which you probably already know, is being very, 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 very poor, okay? But I won't go into it, we'll save that for another video. So next Q and A, let's go. What sessions do you trade now that you're in Australia? Great question, great question. I've had this question a lot recently, is what sessions do I trade? I trade the exact same trading sessions as if I was trading at home. I don't really trade the Asian session here because I've never really traded it, so I don't really know how it moves. And I don't really like how it moves. For swing trading, there's no exact session of when I trade. I have my alerts set and I'm pretty much going from there, but most of the time they're coming between London and New York. When I'm day trading the NASDAQ, I will trade two to three hours pre and then open London and then I'll trade again two hours pre New York and then New York open and then that is it I don't trade day trading after that you know I don't really check the markets that much after that. I have my alerts set um, and I go from there I do not need to be watching it 24 7 I've got my alerts set I've done my day trading I'm out my alerts go off fantastic I'll come back take a trade other than that that's me out having strict hours of when you trade based off the data that you found and you know that works is very, very important. Otherwise, you know, you could just sit there all day, especially when you become a full-time trader, which I'm sure many of you guys will get to that. I believe in you guys, is if you become a full-time trader, it's very, very easy in the beginning to just sit there day in and day out. I think you just need to sit here, sit by your desk and just bam, all day. I cannot leave because the second I leave, I'm gonna miss opportunity. But having your plan that you know works in your trading hours and absolutely sticking to that is very, very important. Anything that happens outside of them hours, regardless if it's the best position you could have ever taken, it's not in your trading hours that you know works, therefore ignore it, it's out of the picture. I couldn't care less if I come back the next day and I see that there was a fantastic position in terms of day trading two hours later. My day trading system and time frame works, Therefore, I'm only sticking to that and I'm not adjusting that based off wherever I am in the world. 
I just adjust my sleeping. Here in Australia, it's fantastic because it means just, I, I just get to trade in the evening. So I think anyone who's watching this who's potentially from Australia is you have an incredible opportunity to work a job during the day and come back in the evening and grind. Whereas a lot of people in London who want to be day traders, you don't have that option as available to most people as if you do over here. Because you know, if you work a nine to five, it's very, very hard for you to day trade unless you do what I do and you trade pre-London. If you are someone in the European time zone, swing trading is probably for you unless you can be on the, ch on the charts and actually grind it out. But no, my trading hours do not change regardless of me being here. They're the exact same because I'm following my plan and I know that my plan works. <laughs> what pairs do I trade? Now, again, different for my swing trading plan and different for my intraday plan. My plans work on both, but for me, I prefer if I'm day trading to just be trading the NASDAQ. The reason I like that is because I've explained in many other videos which you can check out my NASDAQ trading strategy video here. Um, but then when I'm swing trading FX, I watch 12 plus FX pairs because when I'm swing trading, I can scan through the markets within 20 minutes and see if there's an opportunity or not. And then I have my alert set and whichever alert goes off, that's the pair that I'm gonna be studying and looking for the best risk rewards on a day trading outlook, but with my overall swing trading plan. But for you guys, when you're first getting started, you don't need a watch list of 10 plus pairs. You should really only be studying maybe three max is all you need and you can build a very consistently profitable plan just trading them. But if you want to swing trade, you can probably allow a little bit more because you know, you're watching the hourly to the four hourly candle closures. And if you're just sitting there just watching three pairs just for that, it's probably gonna get a little bit boring. So you can probably adapt a few more into your plan. Now, last but not least is how do I deal with FOMO in the markets? And I don't anymore, to be honest. I used to a lot, you know, if I left my charts, I would be freaking out 24 seven, wondering if I'm gonna miss something. But what you guys have to understand is a few things, but the main thing is the markets don't actually move as quick as you may think. You know, in the beginning, it's very easy to think if I'm not sat here 24 seven, I'm gonna miss a move. The markets are going nowhere. Zoom out and you'll probably see that most of the time, nothing's actually really happened, you know? I think a lot in the beginning, people will say, like people will look at a chart and they'll be like, oh my God, gold's pumping. And I'll look at it and I'll zoom out and be like, it's not actually really moved. So I eliminate FOMO by understanding that and again, sticking to my plan and anything outside of my trading hours is complete noise to me. And I honestly, in the nicest way possible, don't give a shit about anything that happens outside of my trading hours. If it's not in my trading hours, it's not in my plan, it's complete noise and I just completely block out and ignore it. And that's what you guys have to do. You need a trading plan that specifies all of these things so it completely eliminates the FOMO. And when I'm swing trading, that eliminates the FOMO as well because I always have my hands involved in something to do with the markets. I have a position somewhere at some point almost every single time and every single day of the year, which may sound crazy to some people and some people, even established traders still won't even understand this, but it's something that's massively helped me out is what I've talked about before is never fully closing your positions. Never fully set a physical take profit because it makes no sense if you really look into why it actually happens. And I explain this in my trade management plan, but it doesn't make sense for you to set a physical take profit, especially when price is moving massively in your favor. If you want to secure profits, fantastic, do so. But leave runners because these runners can run, <laughs> hence the name, and they can allow you to eliminate FOMO and they can also allow you to scale in and take different sides completely risk-free. If I then take another position and I take the loss, guess what? I just closed the runner that's running massively that I would have closed anyway, so there's no loss on the trade. So I'm basically getting given more trades to take without taking any actual risk to my balance. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that there. I'm not gonna run over it any more insights because I give too much away here. But I appreciate you guys asking all the fantastic questions here on YouTube. Remember, I do these Q and A's every single month. So if you do have any questions you want to ask me, it doesn't have to be just trading related. It could be, you know, life, time, my plans, whatever you want to ask me, then head over to my Instagram and I'll post up the story once every single month. And I will answer all of your guys' questions to the most transparent way possible. If you wanna ask me even about money, you know, like how much money do you need to be a full-time trader or how much does it cost you to trade and travel the world? What percentage do you need to make in order to be able to do that? Anything like that that you wanna ask me, then head over to my Instagram and stay tuned for the next story of when we do the next one. For now, appreciate you guys tuning in. Remember, we have a live stream 
next Friday live at Day Trade of the NASDAQ. So if you do want to join in for that, remember, like, and I'll post the link in a few days and you guys can get notified of when that goes live. But that will likely be around 7 a.m. London time. So I hope to see you guys there. If you did enjoy this Q&A, then I would appreciate if you just leave a little like, a little comment. Let me know that you enjoyed it and I'll be doing these more. So for now, I hope you guys have a fantastic trading week next week. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.